Hey everybody, welcome back to another Judgment Commentary of Owari Monogatari, second season, but today we're going to be checking out episode 3. But last time in episode 2, it was the end of the Mayoi Hell arc, and it had quite the bombastic finale. First and foremost, Aragi met up again with Tadatsuru after his supposed death near the end of Owari oh. Part 1, and we learned a lot of good stuff from that guy. For starters, turns out he did not actually die. What was killed was just a puppet of himself that he had made that he was controlling from down here in hell, because he's been dead for a while as it turns out because he got mixed up in some dark arts of sorts where he was trying to make a copy of himself and, well, it both worked and didn't work because, yeah, he's able to control puppets of people up in the living world, but he's also dead and trapped in hell. So, we also got confirmation as to why Gaien decided to kill Aragi and then resurrect him right after. It was what I thought, that killing him and bringing him back resets his vampirism so he doesn't have to worry about relying on his vampire powers anymore. But just as Aragi was on the way back up from hell after Gaien dropped a rope thing to bring him back with, Tadatsura gave us one last crucial bit of information. That frickin' Ogi told Tadatsuru to kill Aragi and Shinobu. She put out an order for him to kill them. We don't know why yet, but he was going to do it at first until Oshino stepped in and told him that that would be a bad move. So he decided to just play along and pretend like he was going to kill them and then have Onanoki step in and finish him off first. Oh, also, we can't forget to mention that on the way back up, Aragi decided to wrap his legs around Mayoi and pull her back up with him. Yeah, <laughs> even though she had moved on and gone to the afterlife, he decided to bring her right back up to the living world. I mean, to be fair, it's probably best for her to be like that because, well, she was stuck in hell. Well, more so purgatory, I guess, stuck stacking up stones on the shores of hell, but... I guess living up in the surface world as a ghost is still better than that. At least until the darkness decides to step back in and try to erase her. But according to Gaien, that's gonna work in their favor because she wants to launch a counterattack against the forces of darkness that have been plaguing her this entire time. But in terms of character growth stuff that happened in that episode, we did get one really good thing with our Ragi in that after getting beaten up a bit by Mayoi after he was beginning to question if he even deserved to be resurrected, he came to the conclusion that he actually does genuinely want to be alive, because this whole time he's been down here being dead, he never once felt relieved about that. He was never grateful to be dead, he just wanted to go right back up to being alive. Therefore, Aravagi wants to live. He's come to similar conclusions before, but this absolutely seals it, because... Had he wanted to, he could have just laid down and stayed in hell, but that thought never even crossed his mind. But before we begin, I just want to make note of one thing. You've probably noticed the change of scenery here, and that's because I switched rooms where my recording space is now in a different room than it was before, so it looks a little bit different now. We don't have all of the stuff up yet that's going to take a bit more time. We're going to get some nice new things to splash in the background, but we still got some crucial stuff that needs to be there. Like Squidward. Gotta have Squidward. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of a learning experience here as I try to iron out all of the kinks of recording in a new space, but hey, this video is going to be the first test drive of that, so let's see how it works out. For now, we've got a whole new arc to partake in that I don't know the title of yet, but I'm sure I'll figure it out soon. Now that's the thing. At the end there, there was a lot of talk about space. And notably, she had to mention the notable fact about space that it is mostly comprised of emptiness, darkness, and that a map of the universe is not shaped like a typical map that we know, but rather the shape of a hand fan. Or, Ogi. Apparently, a hand fan shares its wording with Ogi. Yeah, that's very nice. Aragi says he doesn't react, but then we get one little eyeball peeking out at us. From, you guessed it, the darkness. Mm. 
But other than that, there is something that I thought about but didn't think to mention that they confirmed pretty much in this episode that Araragi's connection with Shinobu is still severed because Shinobu is still at full power. If their connection was still, you know, there, then she would not be at full power, right? And they did mention a couple of times that he is now allowed to just be a regular guy again. No vampire powers, no connections to apparitions, he's just a dude once more. Meaning that My Oi Hell ended on a very significant note. Just out of curiosity, I looked up how many parts uh, Hitagi Rendezvous has, and it only has two. Just like My Oi Hell, meaning that whatever the next arc is, that gets the last three episodes all to itself. Which means that next time it's just going to be focusing on the date with Aragi and Senjugahara, probably, right? But I like this episode. It reminded me a lot of the one at the end of Bake, in that it was a lot of conversation with Araragi and Senjugahara, and they always find a way to keep it interesting when the two of them are chatting about this kind of stuff. Definitely less relationship talk going on, but there was still a good amount of it. And of course, Onanoki said that if Yozuru doesn't return, She's just gonna hang around Araragi forever. Even if he were to go out and get married. Ideally to Senji Gohara at this point. The only other one in that slideshow who was even an option is Hanekawa, let's be real. Even freaking Saruga didn't even make it into that list. I can see a few reasons why, but she has openly said that she would be willing to be in a relationship with him if he were to seek it out. And she is definitely more of an option than the ghost of a 10-year-old girl is. That's just how not of an option Maiwa is. But there's no point in taking it even remotely seriously because it was a joke, but... I can't help it. But I think that's all I gotta say on the matter for now. Things are heating up quite nicely with this here. We got a nice date to look forward to. We've had some discussion of space and the universe and how it may pertain to... Ogi. They are definitely building up to the grand conclusion with her pretty soon. The pieces are all coming together. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Subscribe to be updated on more. That would be great. Next time, we got episode 4, part 2 of Hitagi Rendezvous. Before we move on to whatever the last arc in Awari part 2 is. I mean, it just so happens that there's only, including this one, five episodes left of uh, Awari second season. Therefore, if all goes according to plan, I can get the rest of it done this week. But you never know how that's going to work out. But I'm just padding this out at this point. That's it. So let me know what you thought of the episode. I would appreciate that. But till we meet again, I will see you guys all later. <laughs>